Hello everyone, I'm Billy's friend and I'm currently helping him improve his YouTube channel. Although Bill has never monetized his channel, YouTube has been playing ads on his videos regardless and receiving royalties. Therefore, we have decided it is worth monetizing the channel and giving Bill the revenue instead of YouTube. If you kindly let the short ads run in full or play 30 seconds of the long ads before skipping, that would allow Billy to generate a small amount of income and wouldn't cost you a cent. Now I'll hand you over to Billy. Please enjoy his latest video. Great, thank you for that. Now, today we're going to have a look at corporations versus deceased estate because there is a difference and not a lot of people have totally grasped this. So hopefully by the end of this video, and you may have to watch it several times because there's quite a bit contained in here, uh, you may understand the difference and uh, it may become a little bit clearer. So corporations will first look at where the word came from. Corp came from corpse, the dead body of a human being. Now if we go to etymology online, we'll find that it came from the old French cause or from the Latin corpus. Okay, now English was a mixture of a lot of languages, so uh, it's a very easy language to corrupt. So that's why they choose uh, English over all other languages. It's much easier to corrupt it. So now if we look at a corporation, we will find that it is a legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state or a nation. Okay, so when you look at it in its largest or narrowest sense, it is merely a piece of paper that is trading. And we'll, we'll look at that a bit more closely now because there are spiritual corporations, which are churches, and they perpetuate the rights of the church and the, the congregation as well. So if you if you really started your own church, you would get all those rights and you would have a few more than what you thought. Now, trading corporations are slightly different. They're a commercial corporation engaged in buying and selling. Now, the word trading is much narrower in scope than business as applied to corporations. And though a trading corporation is a business corporation, there are many business corporations which are not trading companies. So trading corporation is mainly to trade and sell. But all in all, every one of them is merely a piece of paper. So we're going to have a look at the difference. A corporation is a legal entity, and as I said, it's only a piece of paper. Whereas when a person dies in test state, and if you've watched Billy's Basics, you will know that intestate is, is the placenta which died and got given the father's name. So w the placenta did not make a will, and so it did not dispose of its property. So under the Administration Act 1969, especially Part 3, you will, you will find that that is how they are administering the estate. And as we get a bit deeper into this, you will see the subtle nuances of how they do that. Now, in many cases, you will see John Henry Doe, and I don't know whether a lot of you understand what that means, but uh, if, if the police go down to the morgue to uh, uh, see a body with no identification on it, it's DOE, which stands for dead on entry. So they will often say, we've got another John Doe. Now the surname is Doe and it's under administration. So Doe is your, uh, sorry, your surname is under administration. So we're going to say Doe is under administration here. So remember, your surname is under administration. That is the name of the deceased estate that they are administering. So if you happen to step up and take that surname or give joinder to the first name and the surname, now you are stepping up as trustee. So under the Administration Act 1969, Part 2, Interpretation, in this act, unless the context otherwise requires, administration means probate of the will of a deceased person and includes letters of administration of the, of the estate of a deceased person granted with or without a will annexed 
and in the case of a trustee corporation includes an order to administer. Okay, so administrator, the administrator is normally a trustee corporation. It could be the public trust, it could be one of the large insurance companies which have a trustee division, it could be the Maori trustee. And in, in your own countries, if you're watching this in, a, in a, a place other than New Zealand, you will still have an administration act where they administer all the deceased estates. And moving on, we will see in the Administration Act 1969 here, there are a couple of things that we really should look at. You see, a person is the deceased estate, but you will notice there that it says person or people. Okay, so people is us, the living. You won't find it in very many acts. You will very seldom find it anywhere, but the person is the estate. Now, what they need to do uh, when they're coming to make money for the estate, they need to tie the person to the people. Okay, now here is another one that really you need to go into deeply, because if you're going to be writing a will or a codicil, the residue of the estate. Now that is the money that is in the trust account, in your ZK trust. Now not many people know this, so when they draw up their will, they have the house and the car and the boat and whatever little trinkets they have accumulated over their lifetime. But what they don't realize is that there is a huge sum that is sitting in the ZK trust. If you do not pass that over to your heirs and successors, then whoever the trustee company is that is administering your estate, they help themselves to that. That's how these, uh, these companies get extremely wealthy. So make sure in your will that the residue of your estate goes to your heirs and successors. Now, in doing research for this, I went on to Dun & Bradstreet. Now, we used to find the companies listed on um, the Securities Exchange Commission, but that no longer lists them. Dun & Bradstreet is the go-to at the moment. This is where most of the companies are listed. So I went on looking for New Zealand registered companies, and in particular, the Justice, Public and Safety Activities Companies in New Zealand. Now, if you look up there, the highlight in blue, you will see that that is the, if you want to copy that down or um, uh, go to that, it'll save you searching like I had to do, but it's not that hard to find. But that's the, um, that's the URL up there. Okay, and guess what I found? I found the New Zealand Police is a private company. The location is Wellington, Greater Wellington, New Zealand. And look at the tidy little sum that they're making. Seems to be making quite a bit for a, a private company. Ministry of Justice, not such a good business. They're only 395 million. Not much at all. Not much at all. Now, on that page that, um, that I just mentioned in the previous uh, slide, you can scroll right down and you can see all the different ones that are listed on Dun & Bradstreet. And you may get a surprise that a lot of these companies that are coming to you pretending to be government businesses are private companies and they're just trying to make money off you because you don't know your rights. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's have a look at how the game is played. Okay, now if you watched The Wizard of Oz, you would have known what the straw man is. And that is the surname. Do not ever use your surname. Because that is the straw man, the Sedeke Trust. It is the deceased estate. And the deceased estate is under administration. So they now need to tie the living to the dead to make money. So who comes in but our friend Agent Smith. Now in the Matrix they gave you all the clues. Everyone was agents in the um, Matrix. 
and they raise money for the trust. When they raise money for the trust, they take the money off you because you don't know your rights, and they receive a commission. They're commissioned officers. Now, the parts of the Caribbean told you all about the commissioned officers. Okay, so how do they get the money from us? They try to trick us, and they force contracts upon us. They use threats and intimidation, but there is a way. Intimidation is a tort that consists of the coercion of a person by threats of unlawful action into doing or not doing some lawful act either to his or her own, her own or some other person's detriment. It's definitely to our detriment. So if we look at the Summary Offences Act 1981, Section 21, Coercion, we will find one of our remedies here. Now I'm giving you, uh, in the next few slides, I'm giving you the acts that you need to go to when you're writing letters to break the presumptions and to stop paying these agents money and put them out of business and save yourself a lot of money. Okay, so we'll go to the Crimes Act now. All these pertain to how you are going to write your letters to break the presumption. Okay, 240 of the Crimes Act, obtaining by deception or causing loss by deception. Everyone is guilty of obtaining by deception or causing loss by deception who by any deception and without claim of right. Now, a piece of paper cannot make a claim of right. Only a living being can make a claim of right. So this is where they, you know, just ask them, show me your claim of right. They cannot do it. Okay, just pause the video and go through the, these sections so that you know what you're talking about. And Section 1A also tells you every person is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years. In this section, deception means a false representation, whether oral, documentary, or by conduct, where the person making the representation intends to deceive any other person and knows that it is false in a material particular. Okay, so this is what they use, uh, and everything's in the in the law. They must uphold the law, and they cannot do this if you point it out to them. And they will go away, I can assure you. Okay, so here's the one that really nails them to the wall. Section 5 of the Secret Commissions Act 1910 duty of an agent to disclose pecuniary interest in a contract. Every agent is guilty of an offence, I guess the word agent, every agent is guilty of an offence who makes a contract on behalf of his principal. Now, under normal circumstances, we have a beneficial interest in that trust. We are the beneficiary of that trust. And we are in a de facto relationship with that trust. But when someone comes in as an agent to make money for that trust, the role changes from beneficiary to principal. So we now act under the agent principal relationship. So don't get the two mixed up. Under normal circumstances, we are a, or have a beneficial interest in the trust. We didn't create it, so we can't become anything else other than the beneficiary, but an agent coming in to make money for the trust changes our role to the principal, and they must disclose to us if they are making a secret commission. And unfortunately, that nails them to the wall because they won't disclose that. So now, as we sum up, no private company, which is a piece of paper, can force us to do anything. Can McDonald's? force you to eat only McDonald's? No, they can't. Can Bunnings force us to only buy at their stores? Unfortunately, they can't. Even though it's a good store and I spend a lot of time there, they cannot force us to buy only at their stores. Okay, and finally in summing up, do not be afraid of them. Corporations are only a piece of paper. And as, as we have gone through, we have said that a piece of paper must have someone 
operating the piece of paper, such as an agent. A corporation can do nothing by itself, but they will hide behind that corporation, and that's why you need to pull them out and into their private capacity in all your letters, pull them into their private capacity, find out the ones who are trying to do this to you, and then go them personally. Write and ask questions to break the presumption. Learn your rights and never argue. The moment you argue, you have lost. Okay, hope that makes things a little bit clearer and you can now go out there and start standing up for your rights. Thank you, guys.